Hello, it's me, Troubadour, and today we're looking at the brand new corn update. Let's freaking go. For those that don't know, uh, there's a brand new update in Super Auto Pets, at least on desktop. Mobile usually takes a few more days, so people who play on mobile, just be patient. Uh, but they added a whole lot of new pets, new food, some balance changes, and a brand new way to play custom packs that I'm super excited about. So we're gonna go over all that today. Now, if you don't want to listen to me talk about all this stuff, because by the time this video comes out, it will fit a couple days since the update came out. Uh, I'll have timestamps in the description below if you just want to skip ahead to whenever I actually try out these new pets and want to see the battles. Also, have some links in the description from some other content creators who have already made some really cool overviews and some gameplay from the uh, new pets like RevGT and Metabrusque. So I'll have that description if you're interested in that. But let's go over this update. So the corn update, a whole lot of new pets. And what's cool is there's a whole lot of new customs pets. And look at it, most of it's free. There's so many new free pets. So hey, if you've never tried customs before, been really scared to get into it, now's the time to try it out. So let's go over all these pets one by one. So I'll do like a little brief like talking about each. I don't know how long I'll spend on this. I have tried a little bit of each pet on the customs test server back when they first came out. Some of them have had some changes since then. So uh, I'm not like super well versed on like what's gonna be strong and what's like weird synergies or whatever. But I do know which stuff's gonna be broken. We'll get to that. I've already seen some people talking about some of these pets are a little too strong right now. So let's go over first with the budgie. Start of, turn, start of battle, replace own perk with popcorn and plus one health. That's pretty cool. It does overwrite any perk you do have on it, but hey, popcorn at tier one's not bad. Farm mouse faint feed one corn cob to the nearest friend behind. Corn cob gets plus one to the lowest stat, but it counts as a food, so that triggers stuff like rabbit and stuff like that, which gets pretty crazy as we'll see later on. There's a whole lot of new feds, well, feds, a whole lot of new pets to do with food, food pets. Um, and uh, there's a lot of pets that are this farmer kind, like there's farmer mouse, farmer chicken, farmer cat. They're all related to this corn cob thing. Um, but there's some other cooler farmer pets coming along. Weevil, friendly eight food, give them plus one attack until next turn, works three times per turn. So here it says friendly instead of friend. I think that includes the weevil itself. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's kind of like a reverse like rabbit, you know, I guess. Uh, and it's temporary. Albino squirrel, sell, replace shop food with three random foods and discount them by one gold. I'm guessing this means um, foods from the current shop tier. Or else that'd be a little too crazy. A dung beetle faint. Deal two damage to the least healthy enemy for each food this is eaten this turn. That's really fun. And it only targets one enemy max, but you know what? It's not bad for tier two, especially if you stack a lot of foods on it. That can be pretty good, especially because it targets the least healthy enemy. Farmer chicken. In turn, spend one gold to feed one corn cob to the nearest friend ahead. So I guess you have to have money left over. Um, kind of like the old like puppy and T-Rex and stuff. Uh, feeds corn cobs to the nearest friend ahead and will feed multiple corn cobs. So, hey, free food triggers. Mink, start of battle, gain any random perk from the previous tier. And at higher levels, it will do it with double and triple effect. Now, any means it can include pets that aren't in the current pack. Uh, but that could be really fun if you get like, you know, uh, get like a tripled lemon or something like that. Be pretty crazy. Vervet, buy, summon a microwave oven. Microwave oven gives popcorns the front most perkless friend. Not bad for, you know, tier two. Farmer pig, start of battle, feel adjacent friends, corn cobs, so now you can feed in battle. That's pretty cool. This is what I'm excited to use. I had fun with it. You know, I was trying out the custom server like a month ago with Lebun. Knockout, feed the backmost friend with one apple or more apples at higher levels. None have a trigger limit, so you could use it with stuff like Jerboa or just any kind of food thing, uh, which would be really fun. Love me some knockout pets. Whale chick, eats food, transforms, and gives the frontmost friend plus two attack and health double in battle. So you could do like a pony in the front, quail chick in the back. The pony gets a knockout, feeds an apple to the quail chick. The quail chick transforms and gives the pony plus two attack and health, but double. That's pretty cool. Now the quail, now there's a few of these transform pets. The only thing to keep in mind is once the pet is transformed, it's already used its abilities. You can see here transformed, it does that. It's already been transformed from the quail chick into the quail, so any more additional foods won't do anything. So if you keep the quail chick around and it only eats the food in battle, you can keep doing it turn after turn. But if you level up into the quail in the shop, then you're just stuck with a quail that doesn't do anything after it's transformed. So just keep that in mind and always try out these new pets. Quetzalcoatlus, very similar to Quetzalcoatl. Or is it Quetzalcoatl? I don't remember how to pronounce it. Faint, give the pet that knocked this out and its friends plus one attack, plus one health. 
I remember when I originally played this, it was like, it always gave it to the enemy, but now it's whoever knocked it out. So now you can actually have some strategy if you try to knock it out with your own team. Be fun for Mantis teams. Y'all know I love some Mantis. It's kind of like Inafusa with a Mantis. It's basically like that baby mammoth from like the test server forever ago. It gives basically your whole team plus one attack and health whenever it faints. Uh, Sarcastic Fringe Head, great name. Faint, summon one, 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 level one copy of the backmost friend up front for the enemy. Now you can do some super fun combos with this, I bet. I mean, you can make a, the opponent have a Quetzalcoatlus. Uh, maybe you could give them like, I don't know, an Ammonite or something to like transform their pets into Mimic Octopus. I don't know, just fun stuff like that. I guess we will not really want to face Mimic Octopus, but you know, you can do really funny stuff, you know, by forcing it in for the uh, enemy, you know? Uh, just give him something super bad or something that helps you out a lot. Uh, maybe you can give him like a microbe. I don't know. Just like you can do a lot of funny stuff with this. I think it'd be a really fun pet. Sugar glider. Start of turn. Stock one free cupcake. Then with double and triple effect at uh, higher levels. Pretty cool. You know, cupcakes, nice tempo. And, you know, it does a start of turn and you just get like a lot of stats out of it, I guess. Andrew Sarkis. Very interesting colors on the sprite. <laughs> I guess I'll have to get used to that. Um, Andrew Sarkis in turn, remove the shop pet below and gain 50% of its attack and health until next turn. Interesting. So it's like an abomination mixed with like a werewolf kind of really interesting idea. Uh, it's always the pet below it too. So like if it's the third pet in your team, I guess it'd be like the third pet in the shop. Cuckoo, uh, enemy faints, summon a 1-1 one, one bad chicks up front for the enemy early. Get summoned up to two per battle. Now the Cuckoo Chick doesn't have any ability. I remember originally on the test server, the Cuckoo Chick couldn't go above 1-1, one, one, but they changed that because it's a little too broken. But basically what it means is since it summons it early, you basically can deny enemy summons by making them have to summon this 1-1 one, one Cuckoo Chick. Like say an Eagle faints, it's going to summon the Cuckoo, uh, Cuckoo Chick. Cuckoo? Cuckoo? I don't know. It'll summon this chick instead of like their tier six, five, five, you know, and so they don't get the value out of that. And it's just a one, one way uh, easier to face against so a super cool idea. Farmer cat buy feed friends, one corn cob. Um, this is really nice because you just give everyone some free stats. Uh, this is one of those pets that's a little bit crazy right now in customs, even in standard customs with stuff like catfish. Um, so if you do like catfish, farmer cat, rabbit, hippocampus, and just get like 50 50 stats on everything by like turn 12. It's kind of crazy. Gelada. I really like this one. Eats two foods, transform, and feed one pair to each friend. So it gives the whole team plus two plus two. That's pretty cool. And of course, once it's transformed, it's stuck as a sleeping gelada. Can't do anything more unless you, you know, feed it in battle. Uh, locust. Faint summon one, three, three, plain locust for each food eaten this turn. So it can, it's kind of like, you know, like a hydra or something that, or like a slime where it can summon multiple copies of a pet. Uh, but depending on how much food it ate that turn, my guess is that the plain locust is going to be like its own token pet. So that's pretty cool. Uh, trout friend sold. If it's sold for less, at least three gold gain plus one attack plus two health. This could be really nice if paired with like owl or starfish or stuff like that. You know, times you're selling a lot of pets with money, you no know, elk lines. That's a really cool idea. Blue Jay, faint. Give three random friends plus one attack and plus one health for each food this has eaten this turn. That's pretty cool. So it's kind of like a, you can use it like a food warthog kind of if you wanted. That's pretty neat. Farmer Crow, faint. Feed three crow corn cobs to the nearest friend behind. It'll do more friends at higher levels. That can be really helpful for triggering your food synergies. Plus, there's pets that work specifically with corn cob. We'll see a little bit later. Flounder. This one seems really good. Eats two foods, transform, and give the two backmost friends plus one experience. Give more experience at higher levels. Um, and let's see this is the adult flounder after it's transformed. So basically, just eat a couple foods and you get some XP. That's pretty darn good. Um, also, adult flounder, I'm pretty sure, is the first pet alphabetically. So whenever I get back around a ranked A to Z, uh, I'm going to have to do adult flounder. I do have a, uh, I have a cockatrice ranked A to Z video coming out from pre-patch um, sometime soon. But once I get into this update, adult flounder is going to be first. So that'll be interesting. Tarantula Hawk. Start of battle, remove one health from all enemies for every 10 attack this has. So if it had, um, you know, 50 attack and it was level 3, it would remove, uh, was it, 3 health for every 10 attacks. So it would remove 30 health from the entire enemy team. So I think if you scale this up, this pet could be really good. Venus Fly Trap. This is kind of the, the counterpart to the, um, the Wacky Weekly with the mirror, except this works for any remaining pet, not just the enemy. But sell, choose one remaining pet from the last battle to stock at 2 gold. Um, and it can be, it'll be, choose a random enemy of whatever's left, but this allows you to get achievements for pets that previously were impossible. 
like say the uh what were some of the ones from the wacky weekly you know stuff like the cracked egg the dirty rat things like that this lets you buy it in the shop and get the achievement for it also let me just be clear i'm not counting these uh venus flytrap achievements for ranked data z because those are just gonna be way too hard and way too dependent on the enemy so not gonna do those for ranked data z uh, Black Bear, faint, remove four health from one random enemy for each food this is eaten this turn. So at higher levels, it will remove more health, but only targets one enemy. Honestly, it seems really good. <laughs> you know, just eat it, feed it a few foods, and suddenly you just reduced an enemy to like one HP. You know, that's pretty good. Chimpanzee, friend a corn cob, give them plus one attack and health, no trigger limit. So that can be really nice. Uh, so say like a farmer crow faints, you suddenly, yo, who's driving so fast near me? You guys hear that? Someone just like screamed by on their car. Okay, uh, chimpanzee. So yeah, like the farmer crow, say at level three, it faints. You just fed three corn cobs and you get some extra stats on top of that. Imagine it with farmer cat, you know, or farmer pig, wherever that is that already do the farm pig. Yeah, like it can just turn um, corn cobs into crazy scaling. So that's really nice for corn cob lines. Coconut crab, this one seems super fun. Eats three food. Gain coconut perk. And at higher levels, the coconut perk works more than once. <laughs> so you just feed it a through three few foods. That includes corn cobs, by the way. Uh, and then you just get like permanent coconut for a few attacks. That's pretty sick. Eagle Owl Faint gives three random friends plus one attack and plus one health. For each battle, this is five. So it's kind of like a mix of like Warthog and um What's it called? Like a Hercules Beetle or something like that. Gives more faint, more uh, stats for each battle it's fought. Now it is a tier six, so there it's not gonna be like super crazy, but still that's not bad. Farmer Dog, I love this sprite. Uh, in turn, feed one corn cob to all friends. Dude, Farmer Dog Chimpanzee is gonna go crazy. Everyone gets like plus one or low stats and then an extra stats on top of that with Chimpanzee. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then last of the free pets, Lamprey. Friend faints, deal one damage to the nearest friend ahead. That can be super fun with like mantis teams, hurt stuff like that. Could be really cool, you know, have like a triceratops at the back or like a blowfish at the back with a summon team. <laughs> oh, you can do some fun stuff with this. I think I saw someone like playing around with like a 1-1. One -one. They had like a 1-1 one -one mammoth with a mushroom and a seagull with mushroom. And basically the, they killed, they fainted the mammoth in the shop and they resummoned as a 1-1, one -one, got a mushroom. And then the lamprey would faint it, and then it would faint it again. And basically, it kept going oh, and going until it ran out of mushrooms from the seagulls and get a whole lot of stats. That's super fun. Now we're going to move on to some more pets. A couple of these are coming with these standard packs. Uh, Maltese is a customs exclusive golden pack pet. When it faints, it spins trumpets to give three mana plus one for each trumpet to the nearest friend behind. Um, it's super cool because it's a way to get mana with just trumpets, you know, nice little cross pack synergy. Uh, Namazu is basically the same thing, but for Unicorn, you have spend mana to get Trumpets. And the rest of these are actually their own, like, uh, I guess Tardigrade pack. It's like this little exclusive, like, mini pack for customs only. Or if you have the Sap Plus subscription, I'm pretty sure you might get them for free. Um, but basically, these are pets you have to pay for, uh, or you can get them through the, uh, Sap, or the, you always pay for them, your Sap Plus, or through, like, a mini pack. Uh, but let's check them out. Pygmy Seahorse, start of battle. Give three runner friends plus one attack and health and remove this. That's super good. I think it's pretty good at tier one, dude. The, it's basically like three ant buffs for like having a pet that removes itself. And it's not a faint, you know, it's a remove itself. So it doesn't work for faint pets. Uh, but still, that's pretty cool. Silverfish sell sells for two gold extra. So basically you, you buy it for three, sell it for three because there's already the one gold. But you lose two gold the next turn. Okay, that's really interesting. So you can really invest in one turn, you know, for like a buy sell thing but your next turn's gonna suck. I don't know how I feel about that, but you know, it's a tier one, so that's fair. Umbrella Bird, in turn, make the nearest friend ahead days where its ability doesn't activate. That's really interesting. Can be used with unicorn scaling or maybe just with like a pet you really don't like the ability of like, oh, I don't want my dear lord to faint something this turn. Let me Umbrella Bird it, you know, something like that. Fruit Fly, start of battle, give Blueberry to the opposite enemy and deal two damage to it. This is actually super neat because the Blueberry makes it so it's prioritized for random abilities. But also in late game, you can use it, just use it as perk, uh, a perk removal, you know, you're replacing with like a melon with like a Blueberry. And then like uh, you get, uh, you can choose which pet it is based on your positioning. That's super interesting. Pink Robin, faint, activate end turn on one random tier two or lower friend. Interesting. So like in turn stuff like farmer dog or whatever, you could trigger this stuff in battle. That seems pretty cool. 
Dimetrodon, start of battle. Someone won 5-5 five, five friend if able. I don't know what the friend is. Maybe it's just another Dimetrodon. Uh, otherwise, it'll give friends plus one attack and health. So even if you can run with a four squad or you can just have it in a team to get some extra stats, not bad for tier three. Great, but two, if anybody's hurt, uh, anyone hurt, if nobody's attacked yet, it gets plus two health until next turn, or five times per turn. So say you're running with like a bunch of snipers and get a crazy amount of health, you know, that's pretty cool. Queen B, B summoned, uh, give it plus three attack, plus three health, and remove all other Queen Bs. So basically, it's like a turkey, but just for bees and like honeypots and stuff, but you can only run one Queen B at a time. That's basically what it's saying. Goblin Shark, this one looks super fun. I can't wait to mess around with this. Uh, start of battle, swallow the first enemy with six health or less, and then release it on faint. Now, what's fun about it is that if the Goblin Shark gets transformed, like with the seaweed or like an ammonite, uh, it's not going to release the pet anymore. So you can basically steal an enemy pet and remove it for the rest of the battle if you transform it. So I want to try and do a team around that. It can be super fun just to troll the arena. Uh, Leafy Sea Dragon, start of battle, give adjacent friends plus one experience and remove this. So it's another pet that removes itself like Pygmy Seahorse, but it can be nice for XP teams. And if you have your attack order set up right, you can use it with like, say like you have a your leafy sea dragon uh, gives adjacent friends XP. Say it levels up like your, um, oh, what's it called? Levels up your macaque and then it removes itself. And then the macaque goes because of attack order and summons an orangutan. There's some cool stuff you can do with that. Spider crab, friend attacks. Give it plus four health and move it far back. I think that means to the very back. Works on one friend per turn interesting so like it's like a little safety net thing it takes it takes some ta takes some damage and then moves to the back maybe there could be some really uh interesting uh teams you can make by forcing it to move to the back i don't know it's hard to grade you know it's the one with the icon for the pack faint summon one three three level one tardigrade and make it dazed Daze prevents it from activating but if you can remove the daze like with a frigate bird or a unicorn then it can faint and summon another tardigrade and there's a bunch of really cool teams are about that though because the tardigrade's stats are so low on summon i don't think it's a super strong strategy but it's a really fun one brahma chicken faint give three friends that dealt damage this battle permanent plus one attack and health could be nice scaling like in battle for like snipers and stuff jackal pet flung set attack and health to 13 or 26 or 39 this could be really nice with like uh you know you just like say you're uh you've got it with like a macaque that doesn't summon something or like an orchid mantis or anything like that that likes to summon an extra pet you can just get free attack and health actually i've got a fun idea of doing this with like uh like a platypus or something like you sell a platypus and it can't summon both pets then you just fling a pet and suddenly your jackal has really good stats um, a Marga source. This one seems super good. Uh, friend hurt restore its health. Can restore up to 15 health per turn. So uh, yeah, it can just give you your health replenishes in battle, help you survive for longer. Super good pet. Tier six makes sense. Uh, and then finally, the last new pet, Yellow Box Fish. Faint. Set attack and health of the most healthy pet from any team to 20. Now this could be super fun if you're running a team with really low stats. Like if you're running like a summon team or something. And they've got like a giant rhino. Well, now the rhino can, you can make it so the rhino has like 20 attack and health. That's pretty good. Uh, there's the microwave oven from the Vervet. Uh, here's some of the new foods. Asparagus, uh, increased cell value of one pet by one gold. So basically it's sushi, but one gold instead of two. And it comes up to your earlier. Churros, this one seems super interesting. Give one pet the churros perk. Uh, churros means that they activate their ability before other pets with the same trigger. So say you have multiple pets that have start of battle or like in turn or something like that. Um, it will, the pet with the churros will take priority even if another pet has more attacks. It's a super cool idea. Um, Radish, start of battle, gain any random perk from this pet's tier. Could be fun. I mean, it's random, so it's not going to be like anything broken, but tier two could be a really fun perk. Brussels sprouts, uh, block being pushed or five damage once. Not bad. Seems pretty good. Oyster mushroom, before battle, transform nearest friend ahead to this at level one. So if you have like... Um, Oyster Mushroom on a pet, whenever you start the battle, the pet in front of it will turn into a level one copy of it. So say like you're in the early game or I don't know, it's tier four. So like say you like can do it with a pet behind a scaler and suddenly you get like an extra like sniper or something like that. Like that's not bad, you know, um, it can help turn. It's kind of like the other transform things like seaweed or whatever, or like Ammonite. We could turn a pet that doesn't have a battle ability into one that has a battle ability. Though, of course, this one keeps it at level one. So and it has to it'll transform to the same pet as the one that's holding the Oyster Mushroom. So there is some limitations. Uh, finally, tofu stock one two gold copy of the last non tofu food bought this turn. Um, can be really interesting if you're using it with stuff like 
Say you have like a level two cow and you get some better milk and then you buy tofu, there's a better milk, you know? Or like maybe find a bunch of chocolates, you know? Could be super interesting with that. All right, and that's it for the new pets. Let's talk about some changes for some of these pets. Some of these will just be like small text changes, you know, but some will actually be ability changes. Uh, cat shop food gives two more attack and health or two times more. Uh, it's basically just a text change. Cat doesn't work in battle. Like, so like your pony giving apples doesn't double with cat. It only works in the shop, which is exactly how it worked before. Um, Wombat, now it's before attack instead start of battle. Okay, interesting. Tapir. Start of battle, summon a copy of the backmost friend. So it always targets the backmost friend, but it's start of battle. So you need to run a four squad or else it's not going to do anything. So interesting idea. I don't know how I feel about it. Ladybug, it's now a 2-2 two -two instead of a 1-3. But now it says friendly gain perk. So now that, I think that means it works with itself. So if you give the ladybug a food perk, now it will gain attack. That's pretty cool. Uh, flying squirrel gets extra attack every level. Axolotl says friendly as well, so I think that means Axolotl counts for itself, which actually is a great buff. It's a slight, slight, slight buff to its stats as well, but uh, being able to like put a perk on the Axolotl and have it give itself stats just opens it up so much more. Really like this change. Uh, Tyrannosaurus is now start of turn instead of end turn, so kind of like Giraffe where you don't get like the instant value out of it until the next turn. I think that's fair. Atlantic Puffin says friendly, so I think that means it counts for itself. Uh, Bass. Faint and sell, give one level two cell friend, but now it doubles in battle. Wow, that's super, that's super interesting. I like that. Uh, you didn't really see it used in battle very much before. Dumbo Octopus, yes, let's go. It only takes three rolls now. That's super fun. I'm gonna be using this a bunch. I, I'm addicted to Dumbo, it's too much fun. And now it can only, only takes three rolls instead of like four or five or whatever. I'm pretty happy about that. Cardinal got a huge buff. In turn, gain and stock one copy of the nearest perk ahead and discount it by one gold. So not only does it stock the copy, now it gains the perk itself. So now you can still get like a bunch of peppers and strawberries for cheap, but now the Cardinal gets it for free, and now you can still do it with like stuff like Gorilla Coconut and stuff and get it on the Cardinal. That's pretty fun. Um, Cassowary, uh, friendly gains strawberries. I guess that means itself. Fire Armadillo, I think the change is that, yeah, Fairy Ball takes two, four, and six instead of one, two, and three less damage. Siamese, um, in turn, it gives adjacent friends plus one attack and also plus one health if the shop has discounted food. So it doesn't give as much uh, health as it did before, but now it doesn't remove the discounted food. So that's really interesting. Um, and plus it can still give stats even if you don't have discounted food. Sparrow, now Sparrow, uh, instead of doing 10, 20, and 30, now it's 5, 10, and 15 twice, which honestly I like that change. It's kind of like a better limit at level two and stuff. I think that's a super interesting idea. Ibex, I like this change a lot. Enemy hurt or pushed, it removes the health, but it works on one enemy per battle. So before it, like, say at higher levels, it would target, like, say you hit an enemy, it, like, it would say, like, you reduce the HP of an enemy, and then, like, your pet would hit it, and it would reduce it from, like, seven to five or something. It'd be, like, so useless, because it, if it targets the same pet more than once, the 70% on top of the 70% you already did was just kind of diminishing returns. Now it's forced to target different pets, so it becomes much more useful. Really like that change. Uh, Ammonite is only every two rolls instead of three rolls, which is really nice. That's probably to go with the change they made where Ammonite, the Mimic Octopus, starts as a level one instead of copying the level of the pet that got transformed. So this way you can level it up easier with your rolls. Ostrich, this one's great. Um, now it only counts if the pets are the same tier. They don't all have to be tier six. So not only does this mean it actually does something whenever you get it on early, like on turn nine or ten, but also, you can just, like, if you find a bunch of tier threes in the shop, just freeze them up and you can use it with that. So, I really like that change. Gonna make it a lot more consistent. Uh, Real Velociraptor, Friend Lost Perk, Return Its Perk. I think it's just a wording change. Stegosaurus, I think this is a wording change. I don't think there's any change about how it actually works. Emu, I think this is another wording change. You know, it kicks the friend to the front. Instead of saying push, it says moved it to the front. Whatever. Bunyip, uh, start of battle, set health to one, plus the times rolled this turn. So now you can't just stack a bunch of HP on your bunny up and have it like go crazy. Um, it still seems pretty good. Like if you roll a bunch, like say you're running with like, you know, Bigfoot and stuff like that, and you roll a lot of times in a turn, then you can get a lot of value out of it. Uh, but still, it will always set it to that one, two or three. So that's kind of fair for a tier one. I, I'm fine with that change. Ouroboros, thank goodness it got nerfed. Now it's only up to five rolls per turn. Very deserved nerfed. It was so broken, <laughs> especially in Unicorn, but it's also really good in custom. So good change. 
Abomination, now at higher levels, it cannot copy the same pets. It has to be, it copies like two or three different pets. It won't copy like, can't just copy like three Krakens or something anymore. Um, speaking of Kraken, now it's back to being start of battle. So, you know, it was nerfed to be a 1530 and 45 instead of 20, 40, 60 percent health removed from all pets. Um, and then it also got changed to be faint, but now it's keeping the new change for the health, but being back to start of battle, that can make it super good with like snipers and stuff. Uh, Kitsune got changed back, I'm pretty sure, to where it says all friendly mana, so it's not unspent mana. So you can't use it with like, you know, Pix Pishu, Pixie or whatever, and like Sea Serpent, and then whatever you like, you don't spend from like your Pishu gets transferred, you know, it's what it's all the mana. So it doesn't synergize well with like multiple mana pads anymore, which I think is fair. Uh, Simona Knowledge, I think this is a change they made where like leveling pets, um, if it skips like, say you level pet from like level one to level three, like it does at level three here, um, it will count as two levels up, two level ups instead of one, since it'll count it as a level two and a level three. So that gives you extra triggers on like Team Spirit or like Jellyfish or Clownfish or stuff like that. So that's a pretty cool XP change. Uh, sea Serpent got some big nerfs, which is very fair because it was way too broken. Uh, this pet's mana damage hits the most healthy enemy and one extra enemy. So it no longer does double for its mana, thank goodness. Uh, it will always target the healthiest enemy and a random enemy. Another important change is you notice it's got like no bold text, like this is start of battle in bold or like empty front space. Uh, it's like a passive ability now, like all lowercase, like uh, what was another way's pets I saw that was all lowercase? Like the uh, sparrow, you know? So that means that it can't be combined with tiger anymore. So not only can you not do double damage, you can't do tiger sea serpent anymore, which I think is fair. Um, Pandora's box, now the perks and ailments do double and triple at higher levels, that's pretty fun. And then Cotton Candy got moved to tier five and now it's basically just a reverse lasagna. So, oh well, Cotton Candy before was really good, but also it was a really fun idea. I don't know if it need to be removed, but I think they put the pair in the star pack to uh, compensate for us. You know, it's not the worst thing. And then some minor changes, uh, Dragon, slight stat nerf, less attack, uh, Poodle, more attack, Pillbug, one more HP. Koala got some extra attack. Tuna got extra attack. Swordfish got extra HP, which is great. So now whenever you buy it, it doesn't kill itself every turn. Lion's now a tier six with higher starting stats. So now you can run tier fives with Lion. That's super great. Uh, very good change, especially since this custom is exclu exclusive now. I really needed a stronger ability. A small one has way less base stats. Very fair. Uh, Fig is now before attack instead of start a battle. I think that's a great change. Fig was so broken before. Hopefully this will tone it back a bit. Uh, onion before attack moved to the back once. I think that might just be a wording change. And then Tomato now does 10 damage to the last enemy instead of eight. And then finally, uh, standard and wild formats for custom packs, many new free foods, yep. So standard wild, how it works is basically each pet is part of an archetype. You know, actually wait, I'll save this explanation for whenever I, you know, I start talking about, uh, whenever I start building a pack. But standard and wild, very good change. Basically you have wild, which is the way customs was before and standard where you can only have a certain amount of pets per archetype basically. Uh, mini pack, that's all of, uh, mini packs got all of these pets right here. Um, let's see, custom packs and weeklies can have three foods on tier one, cool. Hard mode toys, you can choose, they changed them, them the balancing, and I can choose from three, that's pretty cool. I still don't like hard modes, so I probably won't try it out, but I like that's a little more fair now. Change levels to go one to three, but count as two level up, so that's for stuff like seminar knowledge and stuff, that's pretty cool. Change perks to also trigger food eaten abilities when gained, oh gosh. Oh geez, that's gonna be really strong with like, they just wanna make Rabbit the most broken pet in the game, I guess, all right. And change versus leaderboard to show the top 25 instead of top 10, super cool. All right, well, let's go ahead and try and build a custom pack with the new stuff. Let's just get rid of one of my old ones. Here's like an old Try Hard Tuesday thing. Oh, here's what I was talking about. So now it's a description of how to build a custom pack. And also it tells you how this works. So pets with more than two icons on any tier are wild. Wild custom packs only play against themselves. So wild basically is customs as you know it, but there's also a standard customs where basically you can only have two pets of a fulfilling a certain archetype per tier. Um, and uh, that means that it hopefully be a lot more balanced, maybe not as high power level. There's still gonna be broken stuff cause it's customs, you know, but it'll definitely like tone back the power level a bit and make you force you to use a lot more strategy with which pets you can, which pets you can buy. So let's go ahead and uh, delete this pack and build a new one. 
All right, so here's all of these uh, archetypes you can see here. And like I said, um, you can only have a certain amount per uh, archetype. So say I bought a pig, see pig counts as gold and cycle archetype. So now you can see I've got one cycle, one gold. So if I add another gold pet like the magpie, boom, that's two gold. I can't add any more gold pets this tier. Actually, there's not any more gold pets. Let me do it with like the, the cycle. So cycle, I've got one cycle pet. There's two cycle pets. And now if I add a third cycle pet, you can see that they're grayed out here. If I try and add that, it immediately makes it pink and tells me that this is no longer a standard pack. It's now a wild pack because I have too many cycle pets in tier one. Um, so let's go ahead and build a pack. So there's a lot of fun ideas, a lot of new food pets. So I kind of do something around that because I mean, Got to try that. It's there's a whole bunch of food pets. It's the corn update. I got to try a bunch of new food stuff. But the main idea I have is I really want to use the pony. So I want to use the pony where it feeds the backmost friend an apple, and I want to use it with another new pet, the gelata. So basically, what I'm thinking is the pony level two. It'll get a knockout and feed the backmost friend two apples. The gelato will eat two apples and then give a pair to each other friend. Um, and then I can use that with like rabbit and stuff and just go like absolutely crazy on the stats. I mean, rabbit has no trigger limit and they add a billion food. So rabbit's gonna be really broken for a while, both in standard and wild. And of course, we're gonna run rabbit and give HP to a bunch of people. Let's get some free attack for it too, right? This is like, this is what everyone's gonna be running, you know? Like they're just gonna be doing a rabbit hippocampus with any kind of team, whether that's this or, you know, doing the farmer cat uh, plus catfish stuff I was talking about before. Um, so let's go ahead and build a pack around that. So I've kind of got my little core of pets I want to build around here. Let's get some other pets in here as well. Let's see, farmer mouse for some food. Um, ooh, I could do like weevil plus farmer mouse in battle. That could be fun. Uh, let's just get a couple pets that are pretty good as well just to throw in here. And yeah, these are pets I wanna try. I'll try, I'll, I'll definitely try a lot more of these pets, you know, as I play more customs games. Uh, we'll put an ant in here. Um, let's see. This will throw in a possum, it's always a good pet. We'll grab a fish, why not? Um, some of them, also I should point out, some of them have, you know, multiple uh, archetypes, but some of them don't have any archetype, you know, like moth or bulldog or cone snail and stuff like that. So that definitely makes them have a lot more flexibility, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see. Actually, instead of a pot, no, I'll keep a possum. Or do I want, I already have a couple food pets. I can't run mouse. I have to think so much more. I'm so used to just click, 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 and I'm done making my custom pack, you know? We'll just grab a couple other pets that are pretty good. Like that. Okay. And we get three foods now. Let's get some food. Uh, we'll try the new asparagus. Why not? Could be useful in a pinch just to get some extra gold value. And uh, we'll do a honeypot. All right, tier two. What are some of these new pets we want to try out? Um, let's see. Dung beetle for each food it's eaten. Farmer chicken. It spins gold to feed a corn cob to the nearest friend ahead. We can try that. Uh, we'll try vervet. Why not? Could be cool with the microwave. Um, fruit fly could be fun. Any intern stuff I want to try? Um, I don't think intern work with farmer chicken because it needs gold. I don't know. We'll just we'll try those for now, and we'll just grab a few other pets that are pretty good. Um, I like doing guinea or guinea pig plus water of youth. I don't have any more XP pets available. Why, what's my XP pets? Oh, I guess guinea pig and wyvern. So now I can't stack all this XP stuff like crazy. Interesting. Salamanders counted as level up, but not sell. That's interesting. Okay, um, cool. We'll keep grabbing some more pets that are pretty good. I uh, like Flamingo, Stoat, why not? Stork, Stork or Lizard. I guess I can't do Spider, Stork and Lizard on the same team anymore. Uh, ailments are nice, sure. Uh, actually, instead of Bigfoot, let's do the Lizard. Um, let's see, ooh, we also got some other fun stuff. Churros and Radish, okay. Activate ability for the pets of the same trigger. We'll try Radish and Pill. Okay, tier three. We want to do Pony and we want to put a lot of stats onto it. Um, we obviously have to run a Rabbit for this team. It seems so good. So as much as I want to try stuff, you know, like Farmer Pig and Quail Chick, really want to try these couple pets. So we'll do that. We'll throw a Dimetrodon. Could be fun. Um, don't really want to use these. Come another archetype. Can't do Sugar Glider either. Man, can't do... 
I'm doing too many of the, the food stuff here. Oh, we'll just throw some other good pets in here for now. Stats, stats, stats are always great. Uh, can't do Baboon, Hatching Chick, and Giraffe on the same team. Um, that's pretty sad. Mm, do we also? Uh, camel's always good on level up. Puppy's always nice, plus that's some free food. Um, any other food stuff I can think of that doesn't have this food icon on it? That'd be good. Skeleton Dog doesn't count as a uh, buff pet. I saw that from RevGT's video, so we'll throw that in. All right, tier three here. Um, we'll try Brussels sprouts. We'll do like gingerbread and uh, want lettuce. Now, here's the thing I'm thinking. So if I'm running gelato, right? Um, I don't want, I want to do gelato triggers in battle. So I don't want to feed it food outside of battle or else I'll just be stuck with the sleeping gelato. So I really don't want any of these random targeting uh, foods like salad and lettuce because that would mean it might hit my gelada and I'd be really sad. So we'll just th buy an avocado. We'll have some more stat foods later on though, for sure. Tier four. All right, uh, crow's always great. I throw in all my custom packs. Uh, Farmer cat could be cool. Um, I don't know about locust. I'll do goblin shark in our video. We'll do farmer cat. Maybe a cuckoo could be really nice against seven teams for a while. Um, Oh gosh, they didn't nerf the goats. They're so good. Uh, some other people, that'd be good. I like putting platypus a bunch of my teams, but it takes summon and cycle. What's some other summon and cycle pets? I don't know, deer's good on level up. Um, lobster's good for pivoting. I like turtle. Hmm. What other food stuffs? Not really much here. Not until I can get to like seal and stuff, you know? Um, we'll do skunk, cause it's good. Penguin because it's good. I could do penguin or sea lion. And we'll throw in the platypus. Why not? We're just playing around. Um, only new food here is the oyster mushroom. I don't really want to try it this round, I'll be honest. But we'll get some pear for our stat foods. Um, maybe banana and a waffle could be good with like the farmer cat, you know, with the buy. That's pretty cool. All right, got to get a cow for my food team, obviously. What other food stuff we got? We got seal, fox, blue jay, farmer crow. Okay. Um, so I want to do seal, but I want to try like farmer crow. We'll try farmer crow. Uh, but I, and I got a run cow. Um, stingray is great, just in general. Um, wait a second, shark summon. Oh, you know it's great. So it's only two pets per archetype per tier, right? But you can have across the tiers. So I can have a mantis, a shark, and a spinosaurus on the same team still. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. All right. Um, blobfish is always great. Um, Eagle could be nice for early level ups. Um, we already got the hippocampus. I'm planning to like scaling with rabbit hippocampus in battle. I need some ways. I do have enough ways to get stats onto my um, pony, you know, early. Hmm. What do I have early? I've got beta fish. I've got baboon. I've got hatching shit. Okay. I think I've got enough things. Yeah. We'll put monkey in just in case I need some more scaling in the late game. Um... How many more pets can I do? Three? I have to think so much more. And there's so many more options now. If I want to do cut like standard instead of wild, I have to think a lot more. Um, don't really want Brahma Chicken, Jackal. I mean, I could do the Jackal Platypus thing to get some easy stats. Flounder could be cool. Uh, give me some XP on some pets. I like that. And uh, one other pet. Uh, plus it's energized with food. One other pet that could work well. Let's see. Hmm, maybe I just buy a pet that's good in general, like turkey. Use that for pivoting. All right, need chocolate, absolutely. Tofu, I don't know if I want to try tofu in this build. Um, hmm, we'll do lemon neck plates, they're always good. Finally, tier six, got to put in a cat for the food. Sauropod could be great too. You can still do sauropod bird of paradise. Uh-oh, oh no, that's going to be crazy. Actually, wait, instead of lettuce, let's put in our stat food in here that I can target with. We'll do lasagna. Lasagna or cotton candy? I guess we'll try the new cotton candy. Uh, Mongoose for free peanut. Peanut could help my pony in the late game. Um, has peanut changed at all? I don't think so. Okay. I know they're playing around with peanut only working once, but I think they took that away. Alpaca for levels. Oh, I want to do the farmer dog. Okay, I forget sauropod. Intern, fiend corn cob. Yeah, we'll do that. Oh, but I can't do cat plus all those. Man, this is so hard. 
I want to do all of these food pits like it's normal customs, like it's wild customs, but I can't. Um, let me think. So I've had the pony in front and then the gelata in the back and then like a rabbit in the hippocampus. What do I want to have as my fifth pet? Maybe another rabbit, maybe a pet that likes being scaled like Cobra. Cobra could be great. We'll try Cobra. Why not? Um, we'll do mammoth just for some stats, maybe. Um, Behemoth for stats, maybe. Oyster by cell. Um, and then we want. And it takes so long. It's just taking like five minutes. We'll do. And I don't want to do elephant seal because I'm already doing. Uh, elephant seal doesn't count as a scaling or buffs. El Why does an elephant seal count as buffs? That's crazy. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so good. <laughs> now I'm gonna run Sauropod, Bird of Paradise, and Elephant Seal in standard. That's gonna be crazy. That's that's gonna be a Chara Tuesdays right there if they don't change it. Um, We'll just throw in a Yeti to help me find duplicates. Maybe, um, I don't know, man. We'll throw in a snake. You know, I'll probably got Cobra. We'll throw in a... Reindeer, why not? For stats. Melon's always good, especially because I don't have lemon anymore. Um, I want chicken leg. And we'll do we'll do a steak. Yeah, we'll do steak. Alright. I'm gonna name this Pony Express. My caps lock is on. Pony Express. Alright. Oh gosh. I hate trying to find pets on this thing. Where is the pony? There it is, Pony Express. All right. All right, so we have built our new pack all around the pony. The whole idea is we're going to have pony feed apples to a gelata, which give pairs to my whole team. And then I have a rabbit plus hippocampus give us crazy stats. So let's see if we can pull it off. It's new customs time, baby. I don't find any new custom pets here. Give me some new stuff, come on. You gotta give me new stuff. Come on, game. You can't do this to me. We'll be the uh, unwashed kilts. I'm so not used to doing live commentary. When I was playing bar guest, all right. We live because the ants. We'll take a draw. Thank you. We'll take you. I was hoping that'd be one of the other pets. There's our farmer mice, but too late. Hopefully, we find a level up and get an early pony. For the boots could be really nice against the uh, the ant here. Yes, sir. Oh, the you see that the last bar guest didn't move forward. That's weird. All right. Um, we'll buy a fruit fly just for fun. Put it in the back. Um, spin gold if you can corn cob. I really want the. I would buy wyvern here, but then I wouldn't have a uh, any stats. I wouldn't have uh, enough gold. Sorry. We'll do it like that. Big bar guest. So we can get a pony. Okay, they've got Dung Beetle, deals damage for each food this is eaten, and perks count as food. Well, that only works for itself. Interesting. Okay, we do damage to the fish. All right, yeah, the pets don't move forward at the end anymore. Interesting. Always like Stoat. Wyvern, I'll take that. Okay. Not bad. We're just tempoing out for now. They've got Queen Bee with no uh, honey yet. So don't really care about that. Peacock's gonna be annoying. Ah, uh, we lose by one. That's all right. It's our first loss. There's the pony. All right. Forget this. I want some more stats on the pony. So what I'm looking for is a pill. Level up would be great. Yes, sir. Um, I guess we'll take the crow. Why not? And there's the pill for next turn. Just gonna try and get a bunch of stats onto our pony. I need to look for a rabbit as well. Oh, did you see that? They they their health went so low because they didn't roll last turn. That's crazy. Oh, it highlights it in yellow now. That's pretty cool. Blowfish. We take the draw. Yeah, it's you gotta roll with the new uh new bunyip. Can't just get it for free now. What Brussels sprouts on you? Let's see if we get a rabbit. We do. Yes, sir. Alright. Feeling pretty good. 
Now we can get level two rabbit next turn. Gonna start going crazy. Could get level two hatching chick if I wanted, I guess. Oh my gosh, it's Scooty! Holy cow, I've never run into Scooty before. That's crazy. Shouts to Scooty. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. That's crazy. I've never run into him before. Of course, he hands me the loss, the legend. All right. Let's go ahead and level you up. All right. Ooh, there's Hippocampus. Okay. All right. I need to find Gelada, and I need to get my pony to level two. And I'm going to start going crazy with this. We don't get the knockout there. Unfortunate. What was the, hold up. What was the other pets doing there? The mink. Gain any random perk from the previous tiers. They <laughs> get an Easter egg and a pineapple. Cool. All right. Let's put some foods on you. There's the gelada. Love it. Uh, we're going to do this. Check this out. Ah, oh, yes. And they all ate foods. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Dude, Farmer Cat's crazy. All right, screw you. And uh, we'll put more stats on you. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is way too good. If I get two knockouts, I can activate the gelada. That's one, that's two. And then everyone gets pairs and stats. Wow, that's so good. Dude, it's already working. It's already working, oh my gosh. All right, let's level you up, that'd be great. We'll waffle you for some free stats. Maybe I just run the farmer cat, screw it. He needs catfish by fine waffles. <laughs> oh my gosh. It gets the stats for the food, and then it gets the stats because it got HP. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Oh, I need to be careful with the farmer cat, though, because then my gelata might transform in... Uh... I don't want my gelata to transform in the shop. I want to keep it for battle, so I can keep doing this. Yeah, everyone's doing this. Look at all those stats. Yes! Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's broken. It's broken. <laughs> um, I guess we'll do this and then make sure we don't buy any more foods that hit our gelata. That was like a, what was this, a 2019. Look at all the stats we're getting. <laughs> this is crazy. So much scaling. Can't feed another chocolate either, because that'll count. Can get any levels, man. Man, I don't have levels, but I got stats. Oh gosh, all the tarantula hawk stuff. Ooh, if their pig was higher attack, it would have done more HP reduction. We do get a lot of transformation. And it's nice that we've been activating it once in shop and that's carried over to battle. That's not bad for the gelada. Um, We're gonna melon you for sure. Get some stats out of it. We'll go for level two you. I think this is just the team. I might switch out Farmer Cat because I'm really scared I might transform my Gelada early. No! How dare you? You destroyed my back unit with the Whale Dung Beetle. Or was it Whale? No, whale cro oh, it was the Crocodile. Never mind. Whale Dung Beetle could be really fun, though. That's an interesting idea. But Big Rabbit. Yeah, Big Rabbit's going to get it done. All right, we're marching down. There's our level two. Um, Yeah, we'll get rid of you. Do a coconut. And uh, am I keeping it around? Why not? I still want the level two uh, pony, so I only have to get one knockout. Ooh, that was, the eggplant was perfect there. Of course, we don't get the gelata transformation this time. Okay, maybe I'll feed it one. Uh, no, we're going to level you first. And, uh, hmm. We'll feed you one. And then the pony will give you the second one. There we go. We can get the pony to level two now. Give the camel up. Get all the stats. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. Dude, real Velociraptor would actually be crazy with this. Should have put that in this pack. Keep the melons around. That would have been crazy. All right. Do that. I'll feed you a melon. And screw it, we'll get another uh, mongoose. Free coconut. Maybe peanut would be better, but well. Oh, perfect. There's our stats. And now we have enough attack. We have 50 attack. We can knock out the rabbit now, get some more scaling. 
Oh, dude. They had a big Monty. Oh, it doesn't matter. We don't care about your baguette. Dude, food teams are insane. Oh my gosh. All right, what do I want? I really want a pony level, and I want another mongoose or a waffle. Rolling down. I'll just take this for stats. There's the pony level. Okay. Now we need to get two knockouts to trigger the gelato this time. Oh, they use the, they try to get double Egyptian vulture with the oyster mushroom to trigger their farmer crowd for their coconut crab. That's super cool. I love that idea. Question is, can we get through this coconut crab? It's gonna have three coconuts. Oh my gosh. Let's go. Oh, that was Equi. Shout out to Equi. I need another channel to put in the description. I'm putting every YouTuber down there today. All right, there we go. Can I get in our mongoose, please, or a waffle? That's what I really want. I want mongoose and I want peanut. There we go. And we'll do peanut. Let's send it so now I can easily get a knockout. Here it is, last turn. Oh my gosh. Why is this possible in standard? Leviathan, dude, Bird of Paradise is broken. And you got the team spirit. Yeah, okay, I'm losing here. I'm losing here. There's no way I'm beating this. I thought I had the broken team. Holy cow. All right, so obviously there's still some balances that need to be made to standards. But hey, we got a super cool team out of it. And I'm really liking these new pets. So there's definitely some change that need to happen. Dude, why can this happen? There's, this is just insane. This is just old customs right here. Oh, whatever. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do a little generic stuff. I'll catch you guys in the next video. But until then, as always, stay true. Thank you.